Hello, Serge here for the Backyard Driving Range. Okay, we're back to working with Keenan, part two. And what, figuring he's an 18 or 19 year old, tall, thin, supple, flexible, strong as an ox. I mean, he's hitting the ball so, so far and so good. I mean, he just launches them like, like rockets out into the air, and, and especially with the driver, they just go like bullets. All his irons are just ripping right out there. What do you think is the big problem? All right, let me get an alignment arrow back out, and we're going to talk about that from this point of view. He's turning too much, okay? So from this, from this view, he was turning way, way, way too much. Same problem I've always had with DJ. The biggest thing that's important about the, the, minimum, uh, the peak performance golf swing, it is a limited turn swing. We turn only to the toe line and up in the back swing, and then we turn only to the toe line and up with the right arm into the finish. We never get behind a toe line in the sacred burial ground, correct? So, he was, this is his aiming line. Again, I have to do this right-handed, but he's left, Keenan is left-handed. He was turning way back in here, way behind himself. So now, if you come, if you go, if you're basically trying to do the peak performance golf swing, which is coming straight back in the mitten up the tree, but instead of your tree being right here over the toe line, your tree's over here and you're up this tree. Now what you got? You got this tree of your body in the way if he comes straight down. So you still got to do a little bit of a rotational move and turn yourself through the ball and, and, and get back to the aiming line to hit it straight down because we know that impact is on, 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 square, and solid. All right? So from another view, from this view, here's what I see. If I'm giving him, a, I'm giving him the lesson and I'm standing over there, what do I see? I see this. I, to, if I'm standing over there or I come back from him over here, I should see the upper arm. The only part of the arm that's definitely over the, over the, uh, the toe line is the elbow to the shoulder. Because we're on an inclined plane, the elbow to the hand and the club have to be a little bit behind us. From this view, it should really never get behind any farther than if you draw a line from the butt of the club to the ground, it goes at the ankle, all right? So, what am I seeing? Instead of seeing this, where it's almost dead parallel to my, to my eye line here, I'm seeing his hands are way back here. Now, we know a lot of guys on tour, like Tiger Woods or whatever, at this point, their, their upper arm is at a right angle to their toes. They've turned about 120, 130 degrees. That's way, I mean, that's way too much. And now you've got to, again, like I said, you, go, you just went up a tree over here instead of the tree right directly behind the line. So we worked really, we really worked on getting it up here and down. And what I usually do with players that, that are very supple and flexible, and especially if they were rotational swingers. Now, now basically in his entire life, I've been working with Keenan since he's seven years old, since he was this big. He's never, he's never been taught to take a big turn, all right? He doesn't even know what a big turn is, but yet he was doing it, all right? It's hard, it's hard to play golf every day with folks and see big turns, and if you watch them, you, you, you can stop bleeding into your mind. That's why I tell a lot of my players, I said, if you see you're playing with somebody that's got a, a swing that has nothing to do with peak performance, you, you don't want to watch them swing, because it could bleed, especially if you're, if you're really big on, on seeing you know, your eyes tell you what you, and, and, and your visual, okay? I said, I'm a very visual person. I cannot play golf and look at somebody because I'm going to start analyzing this swing. So what I do is I'm standing here and I'm playing with you, and especially the tournament. All I'm looking at is your golf ball. I might be, you might think I'm looking at you, but I'm just looking at the golf ball because it's my duty to see where the ball goes to help if this has to be any kind of ruling about whether where to cross the line, the margin, the hazard, or stuff like that. So all you want to do is get here. So the more supple and flexible one is, the more important it is to control it. Women, children are much more supple than the average male. And so even, with, and even as, as, as Keenan is, is, is 18 to 19 now, he has, to, he has a lot of suppleness in, 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 to control. So we really have to work on getting here. So I just told him from the chest down, I want him to, to, to feel like nothing moves from the chest down until impact, and then he just turns and stands up to the finish. All right, that's one of my major thoughts that I do when I get rotational folks who have been taught to turn, turn, turn. And no matter how much they turn, it's never enough. So I just got Keenan, no matter what club he had, I took him from the wedge all the way up to the driver. He stood here, just turned only, only to, nothing moves until impact. And that started cutting down a big turn, and we took with the alignment, and now he was just hitting dead solid straight right at the target with every club. All right, well, that's it on how we fixed up his better contact and, and where the ball starts and where it finishes by just getting him, A, first aligned, and second, cut down the big turn, staying out of the sacred burial ground, turning to only the toe line, 
Left arm over to his, uh, his case, the right arm over the toe line in the back swing, left over to the forward swing. In the mitten, up the tree, in the mitten, up the tree, because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, that's it for today on the part two of Fixing Keenan.